York, Central Park is the mecca for sports lovers. By day, its bridal paths and skating rinks are crowded. The nights aren't bad either. Of course, some sports are more strenuous than others, and sometimes the price of admission is high. But Central Park has them all. If you're up to your old tricks, you'll have a warden again. You promised me. Oh, there you go again, throwing it up to me. Just because I make one little mistake. That's not true, and you know it. Oh, Ellen, please, baby. I'm only trying to help. I'll worry about me. You just worry about you. You still haven't told me how you got it or who it belongs to. And I don't intend to. I warned you the last time. I can't take any more. And I've warned you for the last time. Just keep your nose out of my business. There are plenty of signs in Central Park warning against loitering after dark. Robert Barth was a visitor from Utica. He didn't believe in signs, and he had the scars to prove it. Well, you think that the girl was in on it too, huh? Had to be. It was her idea to walk through the park. Thanks. She steered me right to that bench. Now, I think your best bet is to walk to the nearest police station and have them find her. I can't do that, and she knows it. Why not? I'm a married man, Mr. Hammer. You should have remembered that last night. Okay, so I'm a fool. If it was just a beating, I'd say I had it coming to me and forget about it. But My wallet isn't the only thing they took. They got the key to my hotel room. Cleaned you out, huh? Most of the stuff can be replaced, but I had some valuable contracts in that briefcase, and I want to get them back no matter what it costs. I still say your best bet is go to the police. I don't care about the police. All I care about right now is getting that briefcase back. Now, if you don't want the job... All right, all right. Don't get hot under the collar. This, uh, this girl. <clears throat> Do you have a name? Ellen Rogers. That's what she told me. Ellen Rogers. All right, now then, you picked the girl up in your hotel lobby. You then took her to dinner at a sidewalk cafe on Central Park South. Then what? Did she leave the table at any time during the evening? Well, she left for a couple of minutes to powder her nose. Yeah, she probably called her friends at the same time. All right, can you describe her for me? Tall, about five foot six or seven. Blonde. She wore a peculiar perfume. I think I'd know that again. I'm afraid I'm not very good at description. Oh, no, 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 you're doing very well. Now, roughly 50% of the population is female, and 50% of them are blonde. Now, all you have to do is go around sniffing one out of four Look, minutes. I'm doing the best I can. Well, have you got anything specific to tell me? Something that would set her apart. There was something at that. She wore a heavy bracelet on her left wrist. While she was eating, it slid back, and there were scars right in there. Oh, that sounds like hesitation marks. Hesitation marks? Yeah. Hesitation marks, you know. Oh, you just have a pair of handcuffs on the wrist, so sometimes they fight and they get the wrist all cut off from it. Well, it's something anyway. Well, will you take the case? Yes, yeah, yes, uh, yes, I think I will. Not that it was much of a case, a more rugged version of the old badger game, played with married men who can't yell foul. But eviction notices come once in a while, and sometimes you're not in a position to pick and choose. So I agreed to have a look for Ellen Rogers, or whatever her real name was, and get back Robert Barth's briefcase for him. The Bureau of Criminal Identification at headquarters is known as the M.O. file to the men on the job. To the public, it's known as the rogues gallery. There are 62 varieties of crime classified by the police. These are listed alphabetically from arson through worthless checks. The Badger game and its variations is listed under extortion. Known practitioners of this art, both male and female, are listed by height and color. There is an oddity file that lists physical deformities and scars, a nickname file that cross-indexes criminals by their nicknames, and a modus operandi file that lists them by the peculiarities of their operation. 
The oddities file turned up six possibilities of the height group, all of whom had hesitation scars on their left wrists. Barth Ellen Rogers turned out to be Ellen Robbins. When people use an alias, they invariably retain their own initials, usually their own first name. Ellen Robbins had been held in three muggings, questioned and released when the victim refused to testify. She wasn't as lucky in one case, had drawn a year. She was still on probation. The address on Ellen Robbins' file card was Sullivan Street, one of the older residential blocks in the heart of Greenwich Village. The apartment belonged to Myra Robbins, Ellen's sister, according to their neighbor. Neither of them were in. Myra was working at the Central Park rink. Ellen hardly spent any time in the apartment when her sister was working. I left word for either of them to get in touch with me. The sooner the better. Yeah, Hammer. This is Myra Robbins, Mr. Hammer. I understand you want me to get in touch with you. Yes, I'd like to see you. What about? about your sister, Ellen. Well, what do you want with Ellen? I want to save her a headache. Well, I can't make it until late this evening. I'm an ice skating instructor at the rink here in Central Park, and... Oh, well, how would it be if I came over there? Well, I'd be grateful if you did. We can talk while we skate. You do skate. Well, of course, isn't everybody? Fine. I'll be on the ice, tall blonde in a gray sweater. Gray business suit, flat hat. All right. I'll uh, see you there in about half an hour. I could see why anyone would want to take lessons from Myra Robbins, even ice skating lessons. I almost wish that I didn't know how to skate. make skates like they used to when I was a kid. Now they only put one runner on them. Well, I got here sooner than I expected. Myra? You must be Mike Hammer. Yeah, that's right. It's been a long time since you were on skates, apparently. Yeah, not nearly long enough. See, do they have to make this stuff so slippery? You're just out of practice. Yeah. Now about my sister. Oh. Well, she's got something belonging to a client of mine. He wants it back. How can you be so sure it's Ellen? He recognized a picture in the file down at headquarters. I see. And the police? Well, my client wants it handled quietly. If he gets back what he wants, there'll be no noise. If he doesn't... Well, just exactly what does your client think Ellen has that belongs to him? A briefcase. All right. Ellen has it. What time should she be home? Sometime before dark. All right, I'll see her then. Meantime, Skipper, let's uh, start practicing before this bending in my legs becomes permanent. Now, how do you do this, huh? All right. <laughs> Maybe the old double bladers weren't so fast, but with me, those new ones would never replace them. Anyhow, if I had to start over again, I was in the right hand. I got to Robin's flat a little after six. Ellen started off trying to play it cute, so I didn't waste any time beating about the shrubbery. I let her have it straight. Uh, what do you think you're doing? I'm looking at that briefcase. Now, where is it? I told you. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know what you told me. Now, start telling the truth. No, Chicky, I'm not going to fool with you. You've been inside once. Now, how would you like to go back up? This time for a good long stretch, huh? How'd you like that? You know what you'd get for a second offense, don't oh, you? Oh, leave me alone. I don't want to be rough on you. I don't want to turn you over to the cops, but you don't give me any choice. Oh, right. What do you want me to do? I want you to bring me that briefcase. I don't think of yourself for a change. Straighten up. Oh, my, but I wasn't lying to you before about the briefcase. I don't have it. No? But I can get it for you. When? In about an hour. Where is it? Why do I know you're not stalling? Trying to squirm off the hook. Yes, I'm not. I'm not. I'm... I'm scared. All I want is out of this mess now. I, I will get the briefcase for you. I swear. Who has it? The two mugs who beat up on Barth? Where are they? Well, I can't tell you that. I'm no stoolie. Well, how very commendable. Well, they're only kids, and I don't want to get them into trouble, too. You might try a little of that loyalty on somebody who deserves it, somebody who's thinking about you like your sister Myra. Oh, I know, I know. Oh.
Please, Mr. Hammer. Please, give me a chance. All right. All right, I'll give you an hour. Bring it to my office. Oh, I will. I will. You can trust me. All right. But you make the wrong move, Chicky. And that pretty, pretty little face will be looking through bars for a very long time. I gave the bag back to this guy, Bars, and that's it. It's over. Look, I don't get it. Some two-bit tin badge guy braces and you go all to pieces. Look, when I cooked up this deal, I said that the, if there was even a smell of trouble, we'd drop it, right? Yeah, but real trouble. Hammer's real trouble. Believe me. Now, listen. Now, that bag must have been worth a pile to Barth if he'd pay a private eye to get it back for him. Now, we could have took him for, what, a grand on a thing like that. Can you spend it behind bars? How do we know that you didn't make Barth pay to get the briefcase back and decide to keep all the loot for yourself? Hmm? Have I ever pulled a double cross? Hmm. Now, you always took a bigger share of the cut, didn't you, right from the beginning? That's because the whole thing was my idea. You guys agreed to that. Look, we can't stay around here arguing all night. I just told you the score, and that's it. Maybe when all this blows over, we can start up again. I'll call you tomorrow, Brownie. Good question, baby. Suppose I try it on you. Oh, well, I, I was just going to Jersey for the weekend. Oh, uh -huh. sure you were. I think more like Miami, maybe, where all those rich guys hang out. Huh? Like he's always talking about oh, doing? No, I... I swear it. I can explain. Oh, you're trying to get away from that straight-laced sister of yours? All right, so I was leaving town. So what? Yeah. With the dough you got from Bar for that briefcase. <sighs> no, I... Few bucks. Now cut it. Look, we are on you, you cheap little four flusher. We followed you up to Barth's hotel and back to your place and here. Okay. So what? I'm blowing this two bit town, so just get out of my way and get lost. You ain't going no place. Oh, if I start to scream, you. No, you won't. I to identify Ellen's body. It wasn't something I'd want to go through again. How can you console somebody at a time like that? What can you say? Somebody was going to pay for what she was going through, and from where I stood, that somebody could well be my erstwhile client. Sir, telegram, Mr. Barr. Just a minute. What 
is this, Hammer? I'm asking you. Well, I... I had an important message I gotta get right home. Oh, you sudden wife, huh? Look, if you think I was... I'm trying to get out on your fee. I wasn't. I, I called you, but you weren't in. I was gonna send the check by mail. What about that precious briefcase of yours, the one you were so anxious to get your hands on? Well, I... I've changed my mind. Uh, the, the deal is off. Oh, just like that, huh? Look, I hired you, sure. But I don't need you anymore. Don't try to make a career out of it. This morning, you were so anxious to get a hold of that briefcase, you'd have done anything to get it. Now you just brush it off. What? I don't have to answer to you. Here, let me have that. Well, 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 what do we got here? Look, I don't have to hold still for this. I'm going to call the police. Yeah, yeah, you do that. Sure. And while you're at it, you try to figure out how to explain to them how come Ellen had this briefcase this morning. You got it tonight and she's dead. Ellen called me and offered to sell the briefcase back to me. Yeah? For how much? thousand dollars. Where did you get a thousand dollars? You told me those used muggers cleaned you out. Well, I, I, I had some money in an envelope in the hotel safe. All right, then you, you bought the briefcase for thousand dollars, then what? Well, then nothing. I came back and started to get ready to go home. Ellen's corpse didn't have a thousand dollars on it. Now, whoever killed her got it. Oh. Amber, don't be ridiculous. You don't think that I... You didn't like the trick, did you, huh? So you got sore and you fought her. You want to get the money back, right? No, Amber. I wouldn't. I couldn't. Look, you've got to believe me. Whoever it was that killed that girl must have been a madman right there in crowded Penn Station. How did you know that she was killed right there? It hasn't been in the newspapers or on the radio yet. Look, I, I admit I was following her. I wanted to try to talk to her again, but when I got there, a couple of men came up to talk to her. Yeah? Did you recognize them? It was too far away and it was too crowded. I couldn't tell who they were, but anyway, they... They went away in a minute and then she fell over and people began to scream and I got scared and came away. That's well, you all. you didn't recognize them. What am I going to do? This is a terrible thing that's happened to me. You, huh? What about poor Ellen and her sister Myra? But my wife, look, she, she can't hear anything about this. I, I'll pay anything. Do anything. Okay. All right, I'll take a gamble on you. But you're going to stay put right here until I think you can leave. Okay. If I find out that you had nothing to do with this, I will try to keep your name out of it. But if I find out that you used me to cover a kill, I personally will escort you to homicide, trussed up like a Christmas turkey and ready for cooking. I spent most of the following morning trying to contact Myra Robbins, but she was apparently too broken up to answer my calls. She finally got back to me sometime around noon. It was the big chill. She had no desire to see me now or ever. I finally persuaded her to meet me in the park before she reported at the rink for work. She agreed, but from the tone of her voice, her heart wasn't in it. From her attitude on the phone, I wouldn't have been surprised if she'd changed her mind about meeting me. But she was waiting. Mother, I'm glad you could come. You said it was important. Yes. You were a lot friendlier yesterday. Things have happened since yesterday, Mike. Yeah. Would you mind discussing what you have in mind and get it over with? Are you blaming me for Ellen's death? Well, I know you didn't mean to have things turn out the way they did. Maybe it was just coincidence, but it was after you went to now, work now, on Ellen. Just a minute now. That's not fair. Now, all I did was talk to the girl. I made her promise to return the briefcase and try to straighten out her life. That's all. But maybe it did start things out. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I want to talk to you about. I need your help to get whoever killed Ellen. Well, what can I do? Well, there were a couple of boys she was mixed up with who were in that mugging racket with her. Do you know who they were? No. You don't know who she ran around with? She didn't introduce me to her friends. She met them on the outside. Oh, a special place? Well, she used to spend a lot of time in a little restaurant on Sullivan Street about a block from where we live. What's the name? Uh, the, the Golden Bull. much help, but it's a start. Mike, be careful. Sure. Luigi was a combination chef and owner of the Golden Bull. 
In a neighborhood establishment like this, people are sometimes a little shy about answering questions. So I went to the back of the place. Luigi knew Ellen Robbins and her boyfriend Brownie all right, but they hadn't been in for several nights. Luigi wasn't sure, but he thought Brownie worked in a welding shop on Perry Street. All I could do was work on sheer bluff, dangle some bait and hope a sucker would take the hook. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Sorry, but you got me to thinking about what happened, Ella. Believe me, if I could just get my hands on whoever did it. Well, maybe I can. Look, Ronnie, you may not like to hear this, but Ellen was mixed up with a couple of bad boys in a uh, mugging racket. What are you talking about? That don't make any sense. Ellen wouldn't do a thing like that. Uh, one of my clients was one of her victims. But apparently, she uh, double-crossed her partners and got away with a big chunk of his loot. They caught up with her, took the money back, and killed her. Look, how do you know all this? My client followed her down to Penn Station. Saw the two guys talking to her down there, saw him kill her. Now, if you can find this guy for me, my client will identify him. Hammer, I don't know what you're trying to stir up, but Ellen didn't go with anybody but me. Now, you understand that? I think you better beat it, huh? Yeah, okay, okay, all right. You don't want to help? Don't help! Help? What? Help drag a name through the mud because of some crackpot theory of yours? No, no, nothing to do with it. Okay, I'll do it myself. Well, come on in and make yourself at home. What do you want? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? You recognize me, don't you? You know, you should have left town where you had a chance. Look, I, I don't want any trouble. Trouble? <laughs> You're about to end all your trouble. You got involved with a murder, and you took the easy way out. through that door. You think you can make positive identification? Yeah. Hey, he's wrong. Look, I couldn't have killed Ellen. I was standing in front of her. It was Hill. It was Hill that did it. We were talking about the mugging, but thanks for the extra information. Mugging? Well, look, get off my back, will you? Now, I don't know anything about a mugging. They're gonna need your testimony. I'll do everything I can to protect you. Keep your name out of the papers. With any luck, we gotta get across the thin ice. Thin ice. It didn't take long to get used to the single bladers. Maybe it's because I worked hard. As long as Myra taught me her favorite sport, I thought I might return the favor.